What happens when you send multiple request for embeddings to an Olama model at the same time now that concurrency is supported? Is it faster or, or slower? More reliable or less reliable? Well, let's take a look. In a recent update to Olama, you can now enable concurrent requests. What this means is that more than one question can come in at a time, and rather than queuing up the responses, it'll try to answer those questions simultaneously. Before, the thought was that doing this simultaneously would actually increase the time to complete those answers. But it turns out that that's not always the case. A few videos ago, I did a look at chunk sizes for embeddings, and there were a few questions that came in asking why I didn't try to do multiple embeddings at the same time. The answer, of course, was it's not supported, but now it is. So can I do multiple embeddings at the same time, and, and does it work? Well, if you don't already have Olama, you can find it at olama.com. There are downloads for installers on Mac, Windows, and Linux. You can also find packages for Brew and Apt out there, but they're not maintained by the Olama team, and so some of the processes in the docs may not work. To have the best experience with installing and upgrading later, always use the official installers that you can find at olama.com. Now, if you have any questions about using Olama, then consider asking them in the Discord. You can find that at discord.gg slash Olama. But if you have a question about my videos, it's probably better to ask in the comments below. For this example, I wanna create some code that will embed a portion of War and Peace. Now, the actual text didn't really matter. I just wanted a lot of it. But I want it to be flexible enough to be able to have two requests at a time, or three requests at a time, or four requests at a time, all the way up to 10 requests at a time. To do this, I'm going to take advantage of a common synchronization primitive called a semaphore. So a semaphore will have a count of the number of processes that can be run at the same time. The term semaphore comes from the maritime world, where it's a signaling device to convey information through flags or lights. So here, the semaphore is signaling to the parent process how many embeds can be done simultaneously. In this example, I try to create the embedding for each of the chunks. But in order to perform the embedding, it must first obtain a slot from the semaphore before it can actually run. This ensures that the number of simultaneous embeddings is determined by the count stored in the semaphore. So let's take a look at the code. First, I have a simple function that takes in text and spits out an embedding, which is just an array of numbers. This is the one place we're actually using Olama. So then I have to define a semaphore. This is just a class with a private count and then a wait list for the rest of the chunks. If there are enough semaphore slots available, the process can continue. Otherwise, it waits until one of the running slots releases its hold. This comes into play in the process chunks function. This sets the semaphore to have a certain count and then waits for all the chunks to process. Each chunk tries to get a semaphore slot and waits until the semaphore returns, which signals that there's another slot available. When it does, it performs the embed. Anytime an embed runs, it has no knowledge of there being other embeds running. It just does its thing and completes. The embedding is then saved to an array of results. When it's done, it calls release from the semaphore class, allowing another chunk to process. Okay, so at the beginning of the code, I have it read the full text of War and Peace, which I downloaded from Project Gutenberg. Then I use my chunk text by sentences function from my Matt's LLM tools module that I have used a few times in other videos. This just creates an array of sentences in the original text. Finding sentences is actually kind of hard. It's not just a matter of finding periods because they can show up in lots of places. It then bunches up the sentences in groups defined by the length provided when calling the function. There's also no overlap that says how many sentences in one group will also show up in the previous and the next groups. These groups are then returned in an array. Since the grouping of sentences isn't affected by how the embedding works, it's done before the loops through the different concurrency settings. Concurrency levels defines the number of semaphore slots available in each run. Then for each of those, I start a timer, run process chunks, end the timer, and print out the results. Let's try it out. To get this to work, we have to set the environment variable olama num parallel to 10. There are different processes to do this on Linux versus Mac versus Windows. 
Take a look at the docs to figure out the right process for you. Then run bun index ts, and you'll see that for two and three concurrent operations, it runs pretty reliably each time and gets faster. But it often starts failing, usually at four, five, or six. I think this is because this is still a very experimental feature, and it should get better in the next few releases. At least, I hope it does. Here are the results for a few runs. All of these are running on my MacBook Pro, which is an M1 Max with 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, I wanted to see if this would run any differently on some Linux boxes in the cloud. I first tried an A100 with 12 virtual CPUs on Google Cloud and 40 gigs of VRAM. For a single operation, it was three times slower than the M1. But at two simultaneous operations, it was much faster than one. It kept improving, but also chances of errors increases as number of simultaneous requests increase. By four or five simultaneous operations, it started to get on par with a single operation on the Mac. I tried on another machine running an L4 GPU with 96 virtual CPUs and saw no difference in performance. In my code, I have a try-catch block that just ignores any errors. And then at the end, I output number of embeds created over number of chunks requested, giving a percentage of success for embeddings. For a real run, I should probably have it retry a number of times so that I always get all the chunks embedded. And of course, I should store the embeddings in a vector store so that I can actually use them. Even with some retries, running the multiple simultaneous operations will see a pretty significant speed increase for embeddings. Now, of course, this opens up a whole bunch of questions that I plan to address in some future videos. I'd like to see how these numbers compare with doing the same process using open AI services or using Hugging Faces libraries locally. And then just being faster isn't of much use if the embedding's performance isn't as good. So do the embedding and then ask a question. Are the OpenAI embeddings any better or worse than what I can get using Olama? And then there are a few embedding models on Olama, and how do they all perform? And then some folks feel that the orders of magnitude longer that models like Mistral take for embeddings means better results. So can I finally prove that that is not the case? Does concurrency make a better case for using models like Mistral? I don't think so. There are probably some other questions here too. I just can't think of them as I write this script. Do you have any you'd like to answer? Let me know in the comments below. Some folks have had questions about how I make these videos or how I gather content or other tangents. If you have those questions too, consider signing up for my newsletter. I share other things I'm working on and behind the scenes stuff there. You can find out more at technovangelist.com slash newsletter. And then there's also a Patreon at patreon.com slash technoevangelist. Anyway, thanks so much for being here. Goodbye. I don't know where my water bottle is. I've been looking for it for a few days. Not on the floor, not in here, not in the kitchen. I don't know.